Okay. So just, uh, sorry, I just had to mute everyone. It's a lot of uh, background noise. So today's uh, presentation is going to be given by Sami Tehkinen. He is uh, actually from a Finnish company called Your EDI. Uh, they are doing some stuff around uh, IPaaS kind of integration product. And uh, looking at this uh, session abstract, it looks like he's going to talk more about uh, hybrid kind of scenarios and how organizations can take advantage of it. So before I hand over to Sami, I just want to cover a couple of uh, a couple of uh, uh, things. The, the first thing is you probably know like a BizTalk Summit. We've been trying to push it for the last uh, few weeks. Uh, the registrations are going uh, pretty well, and uh, we we are we crossed 250 registrations and still a month to go. So this is going to be one of the biggest uh, BizTalk events and uh, we have go, got a lot of people from the product group and uh, partners and uh, it's going to be a fun event for uh, two days. So uh, I believe most of you on this call is already registered. So if not, you, know, you can... If uh, somebody complains, there's no audio. That's fine. So let me... Let me continue on. So I think for those of you who joined first time for this thing, we are introducing this integration Monday, just a bit of a background. So this is, you know, like we used to do this uh, UK connected system user groups uh, a, a, a before. And the beginning this year, uh, myself and uh, Michael Saperson desired that like uh, since it's a, it, it, we wanted to cover the global audience, we just wanted to go fully online. And it's going pretty well. The reception for this event was pretty good for the last uh, uh, last uh, few few weeks. So it basically it has a webcast on every Monday, 7:30 p.m. UK time. So just you know, be be aware of the of the daylight saving saving times. But it's generally 7:30 UK time. So it's basically engaging with all the MVPs, the Microsoft product group, and uh, people from the community. So for example, today's for talk is. A, a from Sami, who's from a Finnish company, and they're doing some exciting stuff on BDI. So we hope it will be will be interesting uh, talk. So there are uh, the, the you probably all you know the the website, the integrationusergroup.com. That's where we keep everything in a single place. So you might have already seen a link to the live uh, uh, discussion. So if you wanted to discuss anything about today's topic, you can just jump in there and start the conversation. And a speaker or somebody in the, the group will will reply back to your your, your queries. So I think with that, uh, we're also you know like uh, there are there are few, <coughs> few upcoming events you probably need to be aware. So the next week is going to be uh, by Tamoso about the ESB toolkit and extending stuff like that. And after the 30th March is an interesting session by Dan Rasunawa. He's actually a product group member from Azure Service Bus team. And he's working on some of the event hub stuff. So that will be a really interesting talk. And the 6th of April is again followed by another event hubs kind of a discussion by Nishna Prudale. So that will be our uh, last one before the summit. I think we, the summit day, April 13th, there is no uh, no uh, integration Monday. Apart from that, we have everything lined up till up until June. So there's a lot of things are going to come. So thanks for joining. I'm going to pass on the control to Sami. Uh, just uh, one second. OK. Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Right, hi. Okay, so very first, thanks for all the organizers, organizers of this call in order for this opportunity to be talking here in the Integration Monday. So it is a quite a rare pleasure to talk to a group of people with uh, common integration backgrounds. So I'm very pleased to join you. So, very first, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Sami Pähtinen, and I'm working as a CTO in a Finnish company called Your EDI. And um, tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between 
integrations uh, that happen within the data center or EAI and also integrations between different organizations or EDI or B2B, uh, however we want to call that. So my own integration career started back in 2000 and um, for whole the last decade I was pretty much involved with EAI type of integrations. Um, making sure that applications and systems that are located within the corporate network were able to communicate with each other. Uh, I wasn't that interested at that time uh, about how the organizations will communicate with each other, but the focus was pretty much on what was happening within the firewall. Um, during the last decade, I was working with Microsoft technologies and uh, First with a custom-built integration platform and later on pretty much with Microsoft BizTalk and all the associated technology. Okay, so if we start, um, let's start with the considering a little bit what is the difference between EAI and uh, EDI integrations. One thing is happening within the fire firewall and another thing is happening in the public network. So. What are actually the differences with these different kinds of integrations, or are there any? So, in this presentation, uh, I mean with EAI, basically, integration that is happening within an organization. Uh, integrating internal applications, uh, although we have a possibility to communicate with external applications, and here with internal, I mean basically business applications that my organization is using. These applications may reside in my own data center on-premise or they can be also uh, SaaS software that, is, that I'm utilizing uh, and buying as a service from some vendor. But the basic idea here is that whenever I'm building this kind of integration, I'm focusing Bas um, uh, focusing on my organization. And whenever I'm building an integration solution, I'm thinking it from the start from internal point of view. What are my company's processes? How do I uh, manage those processes? How do I use my own applications? And how do I integrate these applications? So whether the applications are actually hosted in my data center or um, as a SaaS service, that's that's one thing. But the ma major idea is that these are my applications. I run them them with my own rules. And um, what could be then a typical EAI case? Um, typical is a very strong word. Uh, you all know that there is no such thing as a typical integration solution. But um, what could it be? It could be integrating ERPs in, uh, within my organization, integrating ERPs with CRMs, uh, combining them with uh, stuff from some finance application, etc. So pretty much covering all the basic processes from of my organization. And I'm when I'm creating these processes, integration processes for these purposes. I'm basically thinking from a single organization's viewpoint. Um, uh, if I'm if I'm integrating my CRM, I'm you know, interested in the of the accounts in the CRM that belong to my organization. If I'm integrating with my financial solution, I'm interested in the numbers that belong to my organization, etc. And from the beginning, I'm thinking about all the information that I'm exchanging between these different applications, I'm uh, considering them to be strictly confidential. Uh, they belong only to my company. I have no need to think about publicity or uh, different levels of um, publicity in here, because these are all company confidential stuff. I can exchange them pretty freely between my own applications but in, there's no way that I could share them uh, to other companies. So, if we want to draw an architectural picture, this, this would be it, uh, very simply. There are others 
the world out there, then there's a firewall and then there's us. There, there are my applications and I'm taking care of that they all are synchronized, all the um, entities in all these uh, entities and objects in all of these um, applications are intact and they are always uh, always updated whenever they are they are updated in some application etc in some rare circumstances I might want to send something outside that firewall or fetch something from there but my focus is completely down here on the ground Okay, so then what's the other side of the firewall then? Um, in this presentation, I'm basically uh, referring to B2B or EDI, and meaning that, the, or in this context, I mean that this stands for information exchange between different companies or different organizations. Um, uh, I might be exchanging information between my company and a bank, uh, my company and a vendor of mine, or uh, getting information from uh, uh, some other uh, or, or my customer, etc. And the uh, thing here is that when I'm developing these kind of integrations that from the B2B or EDI standpoint of view, I'm always developing from a public perspective. Um, basically, I can consider that information that I'm exchanging, I can treat it as uh, confidential between the companies I'm communicating with. I'm not, that inter I'm not exchanging information that is uh, private for my company, but I'm completely living on a different level of publicity in here. And again, uh, if there can be something like a typical B2B case, um, what it could be. It can be integrating financial transactions between a company and a bank, uh, managing audit gas processes, which may span across multiple organizations. This, these processes may start from one organization, um, traverse to a number of organizations uh, on the way, and then uh, finally end to some other organization. Uh, so I'm thinking from a uh, multi-organization perspective in here. And what this could look like as an architectural picture, again, there's a cloud of something mystical, but it actually that uh, cloud, which I don't see, I don't understand what's happening in there, is actually now inside the firewall. As I'm thinking about this integration from <coughs> um, B2B perspective, I'm interested in joining organizations together. And I'm basically using, utilizing typically uh, very simple interfaces with communicating with these uh, organizations, things like FTP, SFTP, AS2. In some rare occasions, so, uh, some web services interfaces, etc. But these endpoints where I'm com with, with which I'm communicating with, they are almost, almost always on the outer edge of these organizations. They, there might be a, an FTP server on the militarized zone or something like that. I never see actually what's happening uh, behind the firewall in the actual organization. So, Basically, what we have here, we have two different kinds of integrations running. And uh, we have basically a multi-layer hierarchy where we have different organizations. These all organizations have their own applications. They might be integrated with EAI solutions that are running on-premise on all of these organizations. And these are then combined together on another layer of integration on the um, EDI level. There might be an EDI operator, value-added network operator, that is basically sensing information between different organizations. And this was, was something that we started to think a couple of years back. Is this actually, is there 
does it make any sense to have this kind of uh, very distributed uh, integration where we have several integration hubs some of them are running on premise some of them are running uh, in a shared service uh, and there are some weird things like sending uh, messages through FTP or SFTP AS2 using protocols like Edifact, X12 and stuff like that when we could actually be or when the overall process is actually about sending information from one organization's ERP to another organization's ERP. There are a lot of steps in between to make that thing happen. There are a lot of transformations in between and majority of these steps might be, you well, know, it's just sounded that there's too much work involved in here. So, we started to think a little bit about what's the difference between these two levels of integrations. So, if we think about integration, it's basically pretty simple. Uh, integration is always built from pretty basic building blocks. There are things like integration endpoints, protocols, adapters, connectors, um, some way how we can communicate with uh, an application. Um, when we are talking in, in EDI, uh, sorry, EAI, we are talking about interfaces like interfacing uh, applications directly through APIs, uh, database co uh, communications, possibly in some cases file system communications, and a number of different protocols that we can use when in integrating with uh, local systems. Uh, in e on the EDI side, these are pretty much something like FTP, SFTP, AS2, and in some rare occasions something more modern. Then we have transformations. We always need to transform information, whether we are working in EAI or EDI world. Uh, even though on the EDI world uh, there are standards, there are Edifact, there are X12, uh, and things like this, still there are a lot of different kinds of uh, in-house formats or different dialects of different protocols. Um, some common, uh, some organization may want to speak with Edifact and the other organization in the same message sequence wants to talk UBL. You need to do transformations there as you need to do in the EAI case. And you always need to have some kind of logic that takes care of how the tra actual transaction is managed. Uh, what is the actual process behind it? When a message is coming in, what, what should you do with it? Uh, how should you, uh, what kind of content-based routing is managed? What happens in error situations, etc. So basically, what you need to do on both levels, you need to create some kind of orchestrations for those message exchange, exchanges. And then you have business rules, you have monitoring, uh, monitoring functionality, business activity monitoring kind of functionalities, alerting, all the support stuff. This, um, well, basically these are pretty much the same on both levels. So, I would take is that uh, on a technical level, there are not many differences. Uh, between these two approaches, whether we are talking EAI or EDI. But uh, if there aren't so much technical differences, there must be still some reason why these two worlds are so much uh, separated traditionally from each other. And I believe that the reason is not that they it's not that simple that they are just residing on the other side of the firewall. But I believe that one of the reasons is the way that we treat information. In EAI, well, we start to th think that this information is strictly confidential. I can't share it. In a B2B world, you know, we think that this information that we exchange can be shared and we have no access to the actually confidential information. So when we are thinking about these two worlds, and uh, we understand that we need to have both kinds of information uh, to manage our 
uh, integration processes and all uh, end-to-end -end business processes, it's pretty easy to consider this world separated by the firewall. So everything that's happening on my side of this firewall, for firewall this is confidential, I can't share this, so I will create an EAI solution to extend this information be between my applications. And everything that is on the other side of the firewall, that's public, so there must be another solution to exchange that information between those different organizations. So that's the EDI world. But, um, well, we are questioning this kind of, uh, kind of uh, separation just the same way that um, today I, don't, I really don't have a, I just have one phone. I'm using that for calling to my colleagues, calling my company's internal calls, and I'm using the same, same uh, handset to calling to also my vendors or business partners or customers. So why should I have then an integration solutions, uh, different integration solution for the managing my internal business and my public business. So, if we think about this kind of scenario where we are starting to get outside of firewall, uh, why should we do that? The, well, the basic reason is that business processes are almost always, at least partly, shared between companies. Uh, there are not many, very many business processes that actually are triggered from an event that is happening within my company. But typically, a typical business process starts from an event or trigger that is actually received from outside my company. A typical such trigger is an order coming into my company, which then triggers a process that um, get, first starts with planning of production, uh, with the actual production, the shipping, which may be, again, outsourced to another company, and invoicing, uh, ends up with invoicing, which is typically carried out by another external company. So, typically, this process, real business process, ex uh, spans always different organizations. So, Integration has to do that as well, if we are willing to create a real end-to-end -end automa automation to our processes. So in today's world, I think we have basically two options. One is to uh, keep on thinking that the world is strictly divided to two different parts, and uh, that uh, line of separation goes with our firewall. So we need to think about world as a private and a public, and the easy way to cope with that is to still continue separating the execution of these integration processes to two places. Or ten, another possibility is to accept that we need to start thinking who owns this information, uh, in which parts of the business process, uh, who owns the integration, uh, etc. And uh, this adds quite a lot of complexity of thinking, but it may have some uh, additional benefits uh, compared to the traditional way of thinking. So, we enter hybrids. Um, and um, basically, thinking about here, about the idea. If we start from either EAI or EDI world, uh, can we expand the EI, EAI easily outside the firewall? Or on the other half, can we uh, get EDI uh, kind of solutions inside the firewall? So, in my opinion, the getting EAI outside to the, uh, to the outside world is way harder than getting from outside world to the uh, to the on premise. The reason for that is when we are creating EAI solutions, there's always a danger that we on, we tend to see these business processes only from one organization's context. And um, uh, when we are thinking that way, it is uh, very hard to 
let's say, realize the fact that the processes are not necessarily only owned by, uh, completely owned by my organization. Uh, there are a lot of different counterparts in the process, and it's very hard to um, draw a line who should actually own this integration well, within such a network. And if we have several companies that have already uh, created their own ER solutions and we want to start networking together, we very easily end up in a situation where we are actually building uh, basically a similar kind of spaghetti architecture that we are trying to uh, help to avoid these EAI solutions. I will come back to that a little bit later. But the resulting, uh, tra let's say, traditional hybrid in the, from the EAI perspective pretty, much, pretty often looks exactly like this, the one that I showed you earlier. But the other approach, which is, which is more interesting, is getting from the B2B or EDI well uh, into your own data center. So traditionally, the boundary between EDI and EAI has been clear. And um, EAI, EDI has taken care of moving the messages from <clears throat> one organization boundary to another using uh, simple file-based uh, batch exchanges, etc. But the question arises, if this EDI vendor can already bring this information to your FTP server, why, why couldn't they take it all the way to your ERP? Uh, and why is it you as an organization, why was you that needs to create this last mile integration from the uh, this EDI vendor to your own uh, ERP. And what happens if you don't have an EAI software in place? What do you do with those edifact files or that are transferred to, the, to your server? So basically, the next step would be thinking about this kind of scenario. You, have, you would have your integration software located in the cloud and it's actually directly accessing your uh, internal systems, ERPs, CRMs, financial systems, whatever. And this is actually not even that hard that you could think, think about in the beginning because uh, let's say with uh, typical cloud-based uh, uh, integration software adapters that are existing in almost all of the IPaaS uh, software suites today, the adapters that you can look at on-premise, they are usually the active uh, active components that are actually connecting to the uh, centralized cloud service, which means you don't need to have uh, any inbound uh, holes in your firewall that should be open, but anything can be pretty easily set up. The only difference here is that the core integration functionalities, transformations, uh, transformations, um, orchestration executions, and things like this would be actually happening within the cloud. And this is basically the way that an EDI operator that is communicating between different organizations can easily create uh, con connectivity between your um, on-premise applications as well. So this is basically a starting point when we are starting to talk about uh, software suites like iPaaS. Um, basically, integration platform as a service is, uh, I think this is the next generation of EDI. And instead of just uh, providing the EDI connectivity, uh, this combines both uh, B2B and EAI into a single solution. Uh, integration platform as service is, well, by, the, if it, by definition, it is cloud-based. And um, what this means is that, like majority of today's cloud-based SaaS applications, uh, you don't, uh, the end customer doesn't need to basically invest in hardware 
uh, software licenses, but can opt in to have a basically monthly based fee, uh, sometimes flat fee, sometimes transactional fee, uh, whatever is the business model of an iPass operator. But with this fee, they can basically create this B two B communications, but also manage the EAI integrations as well. And um, I think that today we are technically in a point where some of these solutions can already be considered as an alternative for on-premise EAI installations. Not necessarily in the cases where you need very quick, uh, uh, or very low latency, or very very big throughput, but in majority of scenarios, uh, we are, we are in a place where communication technologies uh, are powerful enough to make sure that the round trip delays from on premise to cloud and back are not that big. And uh, but anyways, the biggest benefit of this kind of iPaaS platforms comes when we are realizing that they are not just EAI and they are not just B2B solutions, but they are a combination of this both. And with this, we can decrease the number of these those orange dots in my drawings to a place where we might have only one uh, instead of mul uh, multiple ones. However, you need when we are starting to think about iPaaS software, there are always things that we need to consider. And one is the performance. Um, even though the latencies are pretty good, could and the throughputs are pretty big. They still there is a round trip from uh, on-premise to cloud and back. Even though if you are integrating integrating applications that are standing next to each other, but but those are just technical technical things. I think that today the more oh, let's say uh, harder questions that you need to ask from yourself and uh, are basically the questions that arise from trust and legislation. So these iPaaS platforms that are transferring information between, uh, between different companies, they are processing information from multiple sources, multiple organizations worldwide. Um, they are not only exchanging the in information that is uh, public, but they might be also integrating information within your premises that you have traditionally thought of as very private one. And you need to completely trust these providers that this uh, information must be safe even if it is in the cloud. And one question is about legislation. Uh, in some scenarios, you need to uh, think about, for instance, how about what you, how to cope with the personal data, uh, personal information about your clients, your customers, etc. Uh, what does the leg legislation say? Can you even process this information, for instance, in, a, in an, another country? Uh, there are a lot of questions, but there are also some benefits that are caused by Things like uh, uh, increase, uh, decreased time to market, uh, usually pretty quick, quick uh, installation. Uh, decreased uh, costs of different kinds of uh, integration solutions when you are changing from EI to iPaaS. But uh, Getting into the summary, I think that I got here now three slides that should summarize pretty much what I have been trying to tell during the uh, during this presentation. So from the beginning, I think that here is the idea where we started this discussion from. Here's the EAI approach to an uh, integration that uh, manages uh, also B2B integrations. There are four organizations. Each of these organizations have three uh, applications, which are integrated using EAI. 
uh, tools that are running on premise. Then we are starting to from then each organization is starting to create uh, B2B connections from its internal perspective. And whenever such an organization sees uh, three other companies out there, it is basically creating these uh, integrations as one-to-one uh, -one connections, which leads into a situation where we are basically starting to build an integration spaghetti uh, outside of our company. The second level of the integration is where we have a centralized hub, which is basically a uh, B2B network operator, EDI operator, value-added network operator, which is building now this second layer of integration into our system. And this is, from the architectural point of view, this is way simpler, but it, there are things to consider here. Basically, having several integration uh, hoops within one solution which may become pretty easily pretty expensive. And the third possibility uh, is the, the iPaaS perspective, where we would have only one, one hub which is able to do the integrations from both perspectives, EAI and B2B. All right, I think this is pretty much my presentation. Um, Personally, I believe that the future of integration will be there in the cloud. And uh, integration is pretty simple stuff, uh, if you think about it. It's about interfacing with applications. It's about transforming data and orchestrating rules by which the information is exchanged between applications. And this functionality, this kind of functionalities will become more and more um, utility now and in the future, just as water or electricity or gas. And um, even today, ERPs and CRMs and other business applications are already becoming SaaS applications more and more. And I think that uh, iPaaS is now becoming the first way of the truly cloud-based integration functionalities. And um, just the same way that our personal communications today is uh, managed by a single handset, I think that uh, integration in the future can be managed by a common integration platform which resides in the cloud. And the technology is already out there, and all we need to do is just figuring out the correct way to start utilizing these kind of technologies. Um, Basically, it's up to us now to decide whether the right place to start is for the EAI solutions or the B2B solutions, or both, or how we are going to create this kind of hybrid solutions utilizing, utilizing possibly the both, uh, both approaches. But that's pretty much it uh, for tonight's show. Uh, there are my contact details um, on the screen uh, if you want to talk a little bit uh, more about technology, for instance, uh, or possibly uh, other, other ideas. You can always contact me from those, uh, those uh, addresses. But I think that's about it. If you have any questions now, I, I'd be happy to happy to ask those.